Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. Back with some more vibes for all you. I'm Mr. Giant. And, and you know, while I'm on here uh, recording this stuff, I was interrupted by uh, my friend Tiffany. <laughs> so if you hear any notification noises, I don't know if it came up there. Uh, if you hear any notification noises, that's Tiffany. What's her last name? Yeah, Tiffany Evans. She's the one that interrupted a brethren there. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is uh, one that uh, in between watching this uh, and uh, watching uh, the last episode, somebody came on in the comment section and suggested that I watch Caribbean Explained by Geography Now. So guess what I'm going to do? Yeah, yeah. Let, let me hear how they're gonna explain my region and thing. You know what I mean? I'm kind of excited to see what uh, Bart is that your name, bro? or Bart, whatever your name is. I can never remember the dude's name. Let me see what you say about the Caribbean. What my people have told you to talk about. You understand, my brethren? Let's go ahead and YouTube and sim simmer. See where I go on here most popular suggestions on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The select majority on all platforms said they wanted me to do a filler week on The Caribbean Explained. So, here we go. Ah, The Caribbean Explain it, brother! Speaking, most of these places are very similar. Like, they all celebrate their own version of Carnival. Yeah. Food and play their variation of reggae, soccer, and calypso music. They all have, like, this... Here's here. I don't know if this is funny or not, but in my country right now, right now, what? what? It's, uh, the 8th? right now and uh people are defying the uh, no crowd uh mandate i guess you call it because carnival they were supposed to be no but they're out in the street and they're playing what we call jab jabs which is they they, they completely blacken their, their their skin with the oil and it used to be some kind of a charcoal or tar or something i don't remember what it was but well you know I've been up here too long, but uh, they're out in the streets dancing and carrying on, you know, like if nothing is going on. Uh, but this is usually our carnival time, and people was like, we're going to play mass. We're going to die whining and grinding and partying and dig, you know what I mean? But uh, if you ever get a chance, man, check out the carnival with steel drums are playing, calypso music, which is called soca now. Uh, Grenada is synonymous with his jab music, his jab jab music, you know what I mean, and thing. Uh, but uh, that's what's going on down there right now. People are partying and carrying on, you know what I mean? Uh, let's see what else I'm going to say. Or Creole black people on the planet. Anyway, on the technical side, the Caribbean is made up of thousands of islands, islands and reefs, divided into 34 <laughs> island entities, 13 of which are fully sovereign nation states, and the rest are overseas regions, territories, dependencies, and commonwealths, or autonomous constituencies that belong to the UK, France, Netherlands, the USA, Venezuela, and Colombia. Generally, if it had to be categorically placed, the Caribbean is considered part of North America, although sometimes others will say it's just kind of its own thing. The island chains are shaped like a hook engulfing the Caribbean sea which is on the caribbean plate and of these islands there are three main island chains the lucayan archipelago the greater antilles and the lesser antilles Less the, antilles, Grenada. the fully sovereign states and then the dependencies and territories keep in mind we already did a lot of videos on these so i encourage you to check out the episodes just go watch them and before we get into it as you know here at geography now we are pretty exclusive with whatever brands we work with usually i only choose brands that i feel my subscribers and i can both enjoy i actually asked you guys what you thought about this brand and you said you were okay with it so we are promoting it. As you know, us dudes here at Geography Now sometimes have facial hair, and sometimes we have to shave our facial hair. And also, we do other things like shower and brush our teeth. These are things you guys do too, right? See, we're on the same page. So far, so good. Well, now that we've established that, it is my honor to say thank you to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. I'm sure many of you guys have already heard of them. They're pretty popular, and for a good reason. For one, it's not just shaving products, but all different kinds. They have everything from shower products, oral care, hair care, skin care, and even butt wipes. They ship right to your home, and for right now, they have a great offer where you can get a starter set for only five dollars after that you can customize your own preference with whatever you want and switch up the products and prices to whatever you feel comfortable with if you have a body they got you covered to get your five dollar starter set go to the link in the description below thank you dollar shave club
Antigua and Barbuda, one of the four twin island countries. It's kind of like the quieter, rich getaway island area, famous for their black pineapple frigate bird sanctuary. They have 365 beaches, one for every day of the year. Most of the 93,000 people live on Antigua Island, and only about 2,000 live on Barbuda, the flat marshy island. They also legally own Redonda Island, which has nothing but birds and a small unnamed gecko species on it. The Bahamas, named after the Spanish word Bahamar, meaning shallow sea. This was the first place Christopher Columbus discovered on his voyage to the new world. Long story short, because of its location, it's kind of like the Hawaii of the East Coast. This is pretty much where Americans anywhere east of the Mississippi like to go on vacation when they want a tropical island experience. There's so many cruise ships that go here, too many tourist sites like underwater caves, pink sand beaches, fortresses, native Taino sites. There's even an island with swimming pigs that come up to you and ask for food. Barbados! Ah, jeez, Rihanna, you still haven't gotten back to me. Barbados is basically the oddball of the Caribbean. For one, it's not even located on the trench line, and for some reason it sits about 100 miles east of their neighbors which means they are outside that is the flattest place ever it was a major sugarcane uh, uh, producer back in the day and I'm telling you I went there man and that place was just flat <laughs> you could say oh there's the ocean on the other side I mean that place was flat Side of the hurricane zone and they rarely get affected. It was also the only island to have been briefly colonized by the Portuguese, but then they just kind of abandoned it. Known as the Bajan people, they are one of the richest nations in the and Caribbean. Bajan and them. Month-long crop over festival. Oh, crop over. And cuckoo washed down with Mount Gay rum. Pretty good stuff. I've tried Ooh. it. Kraken will always be my number one though, but Barbados, you're doing it right. Mongay, Cuba, baby. The largest and most populous of the Caribbean nations, but not the most populous island that belongs to Hispaniola, the name of the island shared with Haiti and Dominican Republic. Cuba Cuba is, of course, a Spanish-speaking Caribbean nation considered part of Latin America. We all know about the revolution, the Che Guevara stuff, and how the Marxist-Leninist Communist Party has ruled since the 60s, which led to the tension during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Clearly, it was resolved by the X-Men. No, but seriously, Cuba sticks out much in that they were pretty much isolated for a long time and kind of kept things to themselves. There was a lot of tension against the U.S., although awkwardly, the U.S. still kind of kept Guantanamo Bay. Aside from all that, though, they have lots of resources and culture. I mean, you can still find the Santeria rituals being performed. Boxing and baseball are huge out here they love doing the mambo cha-cha and bolero and rumba dominica the quiet bookworm girl youngest sister you need of a the sister dominica is probably the most well-kept island in the caribbean nature wise and the government deliberately discourages mass tourism to maintain the beauty lots of rare animal species found here including the national animal the cicero parrot found on the flag known for their purple feathers this is a volcanic island and it is still growing through the geothermal activity they have the second largest hot spring in the world boiling lake and they have the champ Champagne Beach with bubbles coming out of the ground. Dominica also has one of the highest centenarian populations per capita on the planet. Many say it's because of the healthy diet and the happy, carefree atmosphere. Dominican Republic. Dominicans have quite a reputation. First off, they share the island with Haiti, and together the island as a whole has over 20 million people, about twice that of Cuba. The Dominican Republic is, of course, a Spanish-speaking Latin American country, yet for a long time there was a lot of tension between them and the French and Haiti. Haiti even took over for a time, and lots of crazy things happened. For what it's worth, though, Dominicans are definitely known for being some of the best baseball players in the world. World. They, along with Chile, are the fastest talkers in the Spanish-speaking world, and many people have trouble understanding them. And there's always, like, this weird rivalry they have with Puerto Rico in, like, everything. Food, dance, sports, who has the best celebrities? Although, let's be real, come on, J-Lo, sorry, Dominican Republic. For what it's worth, though, the majority of the people in the DR are either black or mixed with black, making it the blackest of all the Latin American countries. Uh, what else? They love merengue, uh, bachata, mofongos, and tostones. <laughs> Puerto Ricans. Grenada, the Spice Island. Grenada is known for two things, being the world's second largest producer of nutmeg after Indonesia, producing about 20% of the world's supply. Not bad for one small little island. They even put it on their flag. And the other one is the Operation Agent Fury invasion in the 80s, which was criticized internationally, but it kind of worked out and the people of Grenada were like kind of okay with it in the end. And look it up. Grenada is also famous for their interesting jab jab. Jab jab. They douse themselves in jab, oil jab, and I want that and dance to a drum <laughs> frenzy to express freedom somehow. Hey, Nuts the falling out black mode. Republic in the world gaining independence from France in 1804. They had a revolution and and you know the rest. This place is stereotypically known as the Voodoo Island, since voodoo is still sometimes practiced here in certain areas. Haiti is also. I tell you, I tell you, this is a funny story, and that was like kind of right before I came up to America. There was a, there was all of a sudden there was more Haitians coming to the island. Okay, on in Grenada we have what you call obia, and uh, of course Haiti is called voodoo. It's pretty much the same thing, but you know I guess it's different tribes with different ideologies of their spirituality. But anyway, there was a, a guy that lived in a place called Calice, and uh, he was the Obia man there, you know. 
and then the Haitian guy moving in, he's the voodoo man. And they had like this war of uh, of these two religious sets fighting and stuff like that. One of the stories, <laughs> one of the stories is that the uh, the Obia man caught the voodoo man's house on fire. The Grenadian uh, caught the Haitian house on fire, and the Haitian man jumped out the second window, landed flat on his stomach, and jump up and start dancing and thing. You know what I mean? So, oh, he's real voodoo vibe now, real voodoo vibe. I remember that story. I don't remember how that ended up. Ha yeah, and how the conflict was uh, was resolved because I uh, left the island. But I remember that story uh, quite vividly. It was funny, you know, because. I, I guess I shouldn't be laughing at it, but hey, uh, you know, there's always an uh, Obia man here or a voodoo man there, or they going, and back home it's not they're going to put a curse on you, it's that they're going to do you. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you see a girl you like, you go to the Obia man, Obia man do her, and she going to marry you. But it's not the American way of doing somebody, it's putting a curse on them. So the largest francophone nation and population in the americas more than quebec it's interesting though because they made their own creole the official language and use it in schools written in street signs books it's a separate thing from french some say haiti is one of the most unlucky countries in the western hemisphere nonetheless they are also one of the most colorful and distinct in the caribbean nations with a plethora of creole dance music festivals and food oh man you gotta try haitian food it's so good jamaica the music island we all know this guy not too much i can tell you that you probably don't already know the birthplace of reggae, ska, rock steady, genres that would change the face of music forever. They produce the most music per capita out of any nation in the world. So many famous Jamaicans too, not just in the music industry, I'm sure you've heard of many of them. In any case, Jamaica has its pride, yet its problems, yet overall is probably one of the chillest nations in the Caribbean. Oh, and they have the fastest runners in the world. Now we reach the three saints, St. Kitts and Nevis, known as the mother colony of the West Indies. This was the first European colonized area in the Caribbean. St. Kitts and Nevis is the smallest sovereign nation in the Western Hemisphere both in size and population with only about 55,000 people. Out of all the saints, St. Kitts and Nevis is the most English influenced one as opposed to the others which were French. The island was formed by a volcano and it has one of the shortest isthmuses in the world at the tip of St. Kitts. Uh, let's see, they're also famous for the drunk monkeys. Hundreds of years ago they were brought over from Africa and now they are known for taking the leftover drinks that tourists leave on the beach and they get totally drunk. It's hilarious, look it up. St. Lucia, known as the Helen of the West Indies because like Helen of Troy and the Odyssey, the then island, island was the British and French 14 times. It's like a weird English-French mixed island. Like, even though the British got indefinite control in the 19th century, they still retain some of the French influence. Everyone speaks both English and Lucian French Creole. Otherwise, it's another That's kind of sort island. of like Grenada. Silver Springs is the world's only dive-in volcano. Let's see, they love uh, green figs and saltfish. For a small Ooh. two Nobel laureates. St. Vincent and Walcott. the Grenadines. Like St. Lucia, these Studied islands him in school. Fought relentlessly between the French and English. Finally, Treaty of Versailles, British, you know the deal. The nation is basically one big island where the majority of people live, St. Vincent which has an active volcano, and 32 smaller so islands fair. and keys, many of which are private islands owned by either companies or people, like Moose. That actually Island. erupted That's earlier this year. Places on it, like Gingerbread, Buttercup, Opium, and Macaroni Beach. It's one of the few Caribbean countries with petroglyphs recording ancestry that can be found in these towns. And finally, Trinidad and Tobago, the last of the twin island countries. This island nation has switched between the hands of different European colonizers more than any other island nation in the Caribbean. It started out Spanish, then it became French, British, Dutch, and then, yes, even Coral which is like a fancy ancient term for Lithuanian. Yeah, Lithuania, once under the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, took over Tobago for a short period of time. Compared to the other states, Trinidad didn't know is that. Industrialized economy rooted in manufacturing. My brother lives on Tobago. They have oil and gas reserves. They even have a few skyscrapers built in their downtown area district. Very diverse population wise. About two thirds are black or mixed with black, and the majority of the rest are Indian, like from India. Which yep. makes about a fifth of the population Hindu, which plays a strong role in the national festivals and holidays. Otherwise, uh, politics yeah, too. Uh, Nicki Minaj. And now we reach the overseas territories and dependencies and constituencies and so on. Now for the UK, they have five islands, all of which are pretty much tax havens. First, we have Anguilla. Yeah, that's how you pronounce it. Named after the Spanish word for eel because the islands are kind of shaped like an eel. Only about 14,000 people and there's goats everywhere for some reason and uh, Chuck Norris lived there once. Virgin Islands. This used to be a huge pirate hangout and uh, today you might be able to find some buried treasure. When Richard Branson named his company after this place because he loved it so much. He spends about half the year on Nectar Island. Cayman Islands. Supposedly 
supposedly this was the birthplace of scuba diving really cool turtles which is where it got its name from and yeah probably the biggest tax haven island of them all montserrat this island had a huge volcanic eruption in 1995 they shut down like half of the entire island and burned down the old capital you can still see the old ruins today and it's kind of interesting turks and caicos this is like bahamas little brother that ended up staying with the uk and at one point it almost joined canada and could have been like canada's hawaii no one knows exactly how they got their name something about cactus looking like a turkish hat i don't know yeah, they have one of the largest barrier reefs in the world, and they also play this thing called ripsaw music with a handsaw scraped with a knife. On a little extra credit, Bermuda is not technically the Caribbean, it's in the Atlantic, but it is a UK overseas territory, although sometimes people of Bermuda classify themselves as Caribbean. Eh. And now the French islands, Guadeloupe and Martinique. These are regions Guadalupe. of France, and they hold the exact same status and legislative power as the regions of European France. They are part of their Eurozone and speak French and Creole. They are like the Hawaii's of France. Both have active volcanoes, one on Martinique killed lots of people in 1902 beautiful landscape Guadeloupe has disputably the highest waterfall in the Caribbean Saint Bartolemy this used to I be think, part of Guadeloupe I, I, Montpellier I think I got it mixed up now it's just a French collectivity this is an interesting one because correct me if I was wrong colonized by the Swedish for a significant amount of time and you can even see the symbolism in their coat of arms with the three crowns and finally Saint Martin this is also a collectivity like Saint Bartolemy and it's like the weird northern conjoined twin of the Dutch Saint Martin that shares the same name on the same island it's basically a resort town and tropical getaway spot with a Cool lagoon which brings us to the dutch islands first off the abc islands aruba bonaire and curacao two of them are considered constituent countries within the kingdom of the netherlands aruba and curacao however bonaire voted to have closer ties and is considered a special municipality all three speak dutch although english is widely known and taught they were once known as the land of giants as the natives were kind of supposedly really tall they have interesting traditional indigenous sites and petroglyphs and cacti otherwise yeah you see a very distinct dutch style in their architecture and very colorful buildings on all three of them then we get to the SSS Islands, Saba, St. Eustatius, and St. Martin. Saba is a special municipality. It is basically just a jutting volcano, potentially still active, and it is the least populated out of all the Caribbean units with only about 2,000 people. It also has the shortest airport runway in the world. St. Eustatius is also a special municipality. It's also very small, and at one point they had a huge Jewish population. You can still see the walls of the former synagogue and Jewish cemetery. And finally, St. Martin. It's considered a constituent country like Aruba and Curacao. They also have that weird Princess Juliana airport with planes that get really close to the beach and people go under it. And now the South American islands. Venezuela operates the federal dependencies of Venezuela, a chain of about 600 offshore islands and islets only populated by about 2,200 people, most of whom are on the largest island, La Tortuga. These islands are also important not only in giving Venezuela an extended economic zone, but also maintaining their offshore oil deposits. And for Colombia, they administer the San Andres, Providencia, and La Catalina Archipelago islands, confusingly closer to Nicaragua, but nope, they took over them. San Andres is the more popular one. It has a cool resort and the culture centers of the native inhabitants. Interestingly enough, though, they have a flag that basically is the same as Scotland's, just a lighter blue hue. Finally, the islands administered by the USA. You have three of them. Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, and Navassa Island. The Virgin Islands are classified as an unincorporated organized territory of the USA. They were for the longest time actually colonized by Denmark until they were sold to the US back in 1916. Today, they are known for the pristine tourist sites and beaches that people like to have weddings on. Puerto Rico is classified as an unincorporated territory to the United States and it's the largest of all the territories both in area and population wise at over 3 million. Puerto Rico is very complicated because in almost every right they are pretty much like their own country with incredibly high self-administration and autonomy. They mostly speak Spanish as their first language, English as a second one. They are U.S. citizens and can move about the U.S. with no problem which is probably why there are actually more Puerto Rican people living in the U.S. than there are in Puerto Rico. This is a very unique topic. Maybe I should just make a whole separate Filled Filler Week video on it. I don't know. And finally the disputed but mostly U.S. held island of Navassa Island. This has nobody on it, no harbors, no airstrips, only a lighthouse. And since it has become a wildlife refuge, it has been closed off to visitors unless you get a permit from the Fish and Wildlife Office in Bocaron, Puerto Rico. And that's just about it. Pretty much everything in the Caribbean. You have 13 countries, 21 overseas entities of other countries, and a few hurricanes and earthquakes, but nothing can stop that warm tropical joy. No! Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. Man, that was good. That was good. I, thank you for suggesting that one for me. I really enjoyed that. You know what I mean and thing? And I'm telling you, man, Be From the Caribbean is a whole different vibe. It is so laid back. It's, it's amazing to me that so many of us move to like New York and Miami, these big cities, coming from this laid back. I mean, on the island, I put up a picture today, the cops don't even have guns. They don't walk around with guns in their waist and stuff. You know what I mean and thing? But uh, 
I really enjoyed this, man. Hope you guys enjoyed this with me and thing. You know what I mean? But uh, carnival. If you all get a chance, check out the carnival, man. The carnival is fun. You know what I mean? Partying in the streets and thing. Costumes, steel drums, calypso music. You know. What was that old thing at Will Smith song? You know, we get jiggy with it down there. <laughs> Hey guys, listen, take care of each other, alright? Cool run-ins. Link in the description as usual.